Okay, hello and welcome to a, another beautiful Light Warrior Sunday. We've got our regular tech host, Walter, traveling, so I'm stepping in trying to do my best for us. So if you guys have any technical problems, feel free to send me a message and, and I'll do my best to help you. We've got a very special show today, but before we get to that, I'll hand it over to Inken for her introduction. Thank you very much, Trent. You are an amazing tech host, your versatile guide, everything. You know, We really celebrate you for jumping around in these positions. You are very special. Thank you for that and for having brought us back today. So hi, everyone. My name is Inken, and I'm one of the hosts of the Library Collective. Very happy to serve you every Sunday at the same time. I, I really love to reconnect Sundays on a regular base with familiar faces, with new faces. It's, it's so, so special for, for us to be here together with you and to kind of be this regular reminder of self-care. The Lightware Collective is here to raise your vibration. We are here to inspire you. We are here to hold a safe space for you. And we really love to meditate together, to practice together and to, to share moments together. So thank you for everybody who's here today. I celebrate you for showing up for yourself and taking care of yourself because that's so important, especially these days. So every session I feel is so, so unique. And we are doing this since more than three years. It's incredible. We have a huge portfolio of amazing sessions that we have created and that are still available because we have our own YouTube channel. So if you check that YouTube ch channel, you can see all the recordings. Each session is recorded. So if you see on the Facebook page, there's an announcement and you cannot make it, it's no problem because there will be a replay. Or if you love the session and you want to redo it, you can do the replay. So it's, it's really, um, I'm proud that we have kind of the structure set in place that is helping you along the way. And, uh, I love that uh, over the time, something has grown into us. And this is like the, the um, tradition of having special guests. So not only our core team is creating the guidances, the meditations, the practices, but we have this special thing that when one of us from the core team is um, meeting somebody that is special, that is unique and gifted, um, we, we love to invite these people into our space and to share their wisdom with you. So one of these guests, these special, special souls is Ginger. And I hand it over to Trent so he can tell a bit about how they, how they got together. Um, I'm really, really happy that she's here because um, you know what's the topic about. And I, I resonate a lot with that. And I, I really... Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the session and I, I truly believe we will all um, receive a lot from this. So I invite you all to open your hearts and be ready to receive. And I hand it over to Trent. Welcome, Ginger. Welcome to the Lightware Collective. So I don't want to give away too much, but um, Ginger has been a regular on and off throughout the years and somebody that's been coming to the Light Warrior sessions. And, you know, she expressed some interest in, in possibly doing a session and Maybe it wasn't all the way there, but we connected a few times and, and I was so excited about the possibility because she's a veterinarian and she brings the, the Western world, the Western medicine paradigm, but then she's also into energy work and she's got that going. And, and I thought, wow, you know, wouldn't that be so cool to, to see where the puzzle fits and kind of, and we talked about that and I thought, wow, you know, there's some really cool things here. So I think I finally kind of pushed her over the line, got her, got her to do it. Maybe she's still mad at me about that. But no, I, I think it's going to be a great session. Uh, and I'm excited uh, for what she's going to share today. So without further ado, here's Dr. Ginger Davis. Thank you so much. Um, no, not mad at all. I greatly appreciate your um, guidance and everyone here. Um, that's kind of what I was going to start with is just that I, um, I found Light Warrior Collective in, I think it was 2020, um, and probably, um, and I found you guys through Mind Valley, um, and I love that this group is just a, it's kind of like Inkin said, where it's just, we can come together and practice, um, 
a lot of us do this work on our own or with groups in person or however, but being able to come together regularly and know that we, um, we have the, we have support and that we have this safe space. Um, and it really is a safe, it's a space, it's a space, which is great. So I love that. And so from the beginning, I've been like, Ooh, I'm going to get on there. And, um, and I've been wanting to do it. And then I've, I've kind of got all mental about it and like, well, what am I going to offer people? Um, so I figured telling my story may be helpful. Um, and just kind of explaining kind of where, like, how did, how did I, how did I get to energy work? And I, I think that that can help people um, see what value it may offer for them and just kind of see that everybody has different paths. And, um, and I want to provide an experience today where we can do a meditation together. And then also um, if anyone has questions at any point, I'm open to that. Like you won't throw me off. I don't have anything like set agenda if anyone wants to ask questions, I'm open to that. I'm not going to have the chat open. So, um, but if feel free to interrupt at any point, it actually helps me to kind of flow with it. And I want to make it where it's something that works for everybody. So, um, okay. So, so Mind Valley, I found Mind Valley in 2019. Um, and I was, I was at a place where I was just like, I was really just stuck. I was, um, I was emotionally, physically, spiritually, I was just in this place where I didn't want to be anymore. And I knew it, but I had, I did not know how to get out of that place. And I knew I was stuck. Um, and I'm a, um, I'm a very left brained person and I've always been into science and, um, I, I honestly thought anytime somebody would start talking about chakras or the aura or something, I would be like completely like they would, I would, it would discredit that person. And, um, and I would just stop listening. And there was just this really strong um, mental aspect of me that would, go, would not go there. And it's pretty much like I had to get pushed there through difficulty in order to open up to that. Um, and I guess that's just how I work, but <laughs> um so, oh yeah. So I was trying a lot of mind-based approaches to try to move out of this stuck place in 2019. And, um, I wasn't really moving the needle much. It was still just kind of like, huh, I wanted to move. Um, I've wanted to move to Colorado since I was a teenager and I was living in Texas and, um, I, I had this huge dream and I, it was decades and it wasn't happening. And then I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even get myself. I was in chronic pain, burned out. And I was in like 2018, I was, most people don't know this, but I was suicidal. Like I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. A lot of veterinarians are, it's a huge problem in the veterinary industry. Um, and it was, it was just a, it was a really rough place. And, um, but I kept, I kept going and I kept, you know, thinking, you know, there's some place that I can, I can move, I can, I can move out of this. There's, I'd gotten myself out of, out of difficult places before. Um, so I just kept seeking. Um, and what I, what I, um, the first thing that really helped me was breath work. Um, and that was through reading about chronic pain, understanding the science of chronic pain, understanding science, the science of pain. And I had to understand the mechanism of how it made sense. Like how is my brain creating this pain? And it's not a structural issue. And I had to kind of go through that. And then breath work gave me the experience of oh, wow, I can shift out of that state. And nobody's doing anything physically because practicing Western medicine, I'm so used to either cutting an animal open or putting a pill in or putting an injection in or something like that. And I thought that's what all that would work for me is surgery or pills or like, that's how you do something is like in the physical. Um, and I was like, what is this? So the breath kind of connected it and it's a physical thing, but it opens up everything. And so, and actually, um, I worked with, um, with Wolfgang from this group um, doing breath work, and he's awesome. If you have a chance to work with him, I don't know that he's here today, but that was really helpful. Um, just another, I worked with several breath work coaches. Um, so that kind of connected the spiritual to the physical. Um, oh, and then the Mind Valley, Jeffrey Allen, that was awesome. That was like really, that helped me really move things because he, he was an engineer. And I, so I believe I like, I gave him credit because he was an engineer. Cause I still was in that place where I was like, no, nah, I don't believe that stuff. But he was talking about chakras and I was like, I guess I'm going to listen. 
I finally started listening and then I started feeling it and experiencing it myself. And, um, that program duality was really laid out like where it was very linear and it helped my left brain. Um, and that's how I found that was my mind Valley experience. And then I find found light warrior collective and kind of moved on from there. Um, with the Jeffrey Allen work, I was able to make some huge shifts in my life. I finally moved. Um, and after 12 years of being in the same place and wanting to move, I moved not to Colorado yet, but I just made a little leap and, um, and I was like, this stuff works. Um, and then I met a woman who is now a wonderful friend of mine who helped uh, my physical therapy therapist referred me to her and she had me connect to my body through the chakras. And I had a different connection than I'd ever had. And I've always been really into fitness and, um, really, really connected to my body. I thought, Um, but this was a whole new level and a whole different way of connecting to my body. And it moved me past a bunch of different blocks that I didn't even know I had. Um, and, and then she did Reiki and I was like, Oh, there's that stuff again, that crazy stuff that doesn't work. (laughs) Um, but then I experienced it. (laughs) I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. This is, this really does something. Um, so kept having these energy experiences. And then I read a book about, um, the electromagnetic field around our body And I experienced a modality called biofield tuning in 2020. And I had about 15 sessions. Um, And the, um, the facilitator was a um, licensed social worker who had been practicing talk therapy for 15 years at university of Texas, which is a big school. um, That's well-respected where I went to, where I went to undergrad and, Um, And so she had, she was legitimate in my mind, but she doesn't do that anymore. All she does is energy work. And I was like, huh. And then I experienced some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, Like after a session one time, I, um, it was like a hundred and 105 degrees, which is probably like 40. I think that's 40 C. Um, So it was very hot. And after a session, I was so cold after she didn't touch my body. She just used tuning forks around my body. And I was so cold that I had to have the heater on for my hour drive home and stay in my hot bathtub for the rest of the day. And that convinced me like there's something going on here. She just used a tuning fork around my body and these changes are happening. And then I kept seeing the changes in my life. Like it was like, oh, I can do this now. These things that I wanted to do that seemed impossible. All of a sudden it was like, oh, I can do that. And I, and I kept using the Jeffrey Allen tools and um, just kept using those tools in my everyday life. Eden energy medicine, that's been another modality that's been really helpful for me. Um, and I still do that every day. Um, and then I, I ended up getting um, certified in biofield tuning myself and started to working with clients. And I saw like this amazing changes in their lives where I was like, wow, I am, I wasn't, I wasn't even always in person. Sometimes I was on zoom and working with a tuning fork in their energy field and moving things. And I would see their lives change. And I would see, um, I I could, I could feel what was going on in their field. And that's another thing that that I want to tie in is that I'm a um, highly sensitive person, incredibly energetically sensitive, um, where like I was talking to my mom about it last night and she was like, I did not know what to do with you as a kid because I was just incredibly sensitive to everything. Um, And so I finally was able to take that sensitivity and it felt like a burden and, and and it, and it, it was part of what got me to that place of burnout. Um, But I was able to turn that pain into a um, purpose and it, and it was like a tool and a strength for me. Um, and so, and I could use that in the energy work. Um, so I was doing all this energy work for myself. I was experiencing it. I was benefiting. I was changing my life, still had this dream of moving to Colorado. And I was really, I was really disillusioned with Western medicine because it hadn't helped me with my chronic pain. I was, I felt like I was failing my patients, my, um, veterinary patients. Um, I knew I was missing a lot there and I was not in integrity with myself because I was still practicing pills and surgery. <laughs> like that's all I had to offer is like, here's what we've got, um, for my patients. And so, um, I had been receiving acupuncture, uh, a lot and it helped me so much. And that, and, and that inspired me to, um, want to do acupuncture for animals. 
Um, because if it helped me that much, then I wanted it to, I wanted to use it. Um, but I didn't, I was like, how am I going to sp- take all the time away from work and spend all that money to get that training? And what if it doesn't really work? What if it's just silly? And it's that, that, that like doubting is so strong in my mind. Um, so I didn't do it for a while. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm not missing anything here about, because I, before I bring in the acupuncture, cause I ended up like, I ended up just using energy work to get myself where I wanted to go. I finally moved to Colorado and, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to move this for those of you that are looking. So this is like what I look at outside of my place each day. And that's what I wanted. Um, and, um, and I, at the same time, I was like, I'm just doing the acupuncture. I'm just going to do it. It's, um, I'm just going to take the training. And so I just started doing things like where I felt really stuck. I kept getting unstuck using those tools. And these are things that I wanted to do for decades, decades, and I didn't do them. So, um, so then it just kind of kept building and it was like, this stuff works. And I would continue to experience it and continuing breath work the whole time, continuing eating energy medicine, like all the tools, I need all the tools, um, to, on a regular basis. Um, so now I'm, um, I'm, I'm practicing acupuncture with my veterinary patients and I, I do help some clients with energy work. That's been a little bit on the back burner since I just moved and made all these changes in my life. Um, but I use those tools in my life every day. And, um, I continue to, to do training and energy work regularly. And I, I want to, um, I just want to share it with people and just kind of give you guys an experience. Um, and I think, you know, this whole, the title of this was, um, how we heal. And I was, I was planning to talk kind of about like the physiologic mechanism of the way that our bodies, they they have an innate ability to heal. And that's what energy work does is it works with, it allows, it supports your body, works with your body to help you bring, it's not just like this stuff that we just kind of like float off and, and talk about like all this stuff that doesn't make any sense. It's, it's being in the body. Like that's the important thing. And uh, Jeffrey Allen talks about that a lot, that our job is to bring our spirit into our body and how can we be more into our bodies? And, um, and I think that's kind of, that's, what's been the, the thing that really allowed me to open to this is that it wasn't just this airy fairy stuff. Like, what are they talking about? Um, with these things that I can't see, um, it bring it into my body was like, okay, so I can't see it, but I can feel it. And then I can see the effects of it. So seeing the effects of it is also really helpful to convince my left brain, like, okay, this is doing something. Um, and it, it, it's subtle that it is, it's, it's subtle work where you can't feel it right away sometimes, but I always feel better. And that's, that's kind of the experience that I wanted to offer for everybody today is just a, it does a short experience of how can we feel better in the moment and how can, um, is there something we can do today? We're all coming from, from different places, um, energetically, and we're coming from different places, um, uh, physically. And so, um, I don't know where everyone is today, but I know that with, I, I know these things always work that with the breath and moving into our bodies, I know we can make a small shift to feel better today. And then each time you make that shift, no matter what's going on, each time you make that shift, it gets a little bit, you go in the, in the right direction rather than kind of falling back on those old patterns of things that we used to do that helped us feel better. We thought in the short term, band-aids is kind of what I see those as where it's um, like addictions and things like that. Like those are just, those are ways to feel better but we don't really, you know, they don't work in the long run. And so energy work is, is in a way to feel better that continues to build and build you up. And it's, it's like a, um, it's, it's reliably helpful for me. Um, so let's see, let's see if there's anything else. Yeah. Just, and just remembering that our bodies, like that we have this electromagnetic body, like we have these energy bodies. We do have chakras. Like I'm sure now (laughs) I never believed it before, but I know now for sure. And, um, that's my primary form of, 
of maintaining my health. It doesn't mean I don't, I don't believe in Western medicine. I still practice it probably 40% of the time. That's still what I'm doing. Um, but, and so I see it's required. It is required. Um, but it's, it's also, there's way more to it and I don't want to miss out on the other part. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what the, the experience I want to offer. And one thing I'm just going to put this out there because if I talk about it, I know that it will start to come to me. Um, I want to start to understand with veterinary medicine, how, um, how we, cause I know that when I work with people's energy bodies and their, um, if I've worked with their heart and their soul and I work with their chakras and everything, I know that things shift. And, um, and so, but I, I don't know exactly how to work with animals like that. I mean, I can do the biofield tuning on them and I could do energy work on them, but there's no, there's not that verbal, their mental part. And, um, but there's a lot of things that I see that just holding, holding space for an animal that's sick and just being there for them and, and the person, their pet parent or owner, like being there and just being there with them when they're in this horrible situation or when they're in, I do a lot of euthanasias and that is a, that's a real challenging time for a lot of people. And, and, um, American culture, we're like death. We're, we're, we don't really deal with death so well, in my opinion. Um, we're, we're like, let's, you know, it, it's not, it's not like a, a spiritual experience for a lot of times. And, um, and so I'm bringing that in to my practice where it is a spiritual experience, those euthanasias and just being there. Um, but I, there's, there's more, I know there's more for me to discover with the animals, like how I can bring these two worlds together. Um, so I think those are, those are the main things that I wanted to touch on and just see like what, what people's thoughts are. I'll look in the, um, I'm going to save a little bit of time for the meditation. Um, so Jenny is. Jenny is left brained as well. And okay. So the energy, um, I'm so glad that this connects. Um, I need to hear your journey, Ginger. I feel so much hope for my own journey. Great. That is the reason I'm here. Absolutely. Like that is sharing my story vulnerably. Um, I know that it, it helps other people because other people have done the same thing for me. Um, so yeah, biofield tuning, um, is the, that's the modality that, um, was, was a, a huge, a huge shift for me. Um, and do, does anybody else have any questions or anything you want me to elaborate on anything else? Or do we want to just do the meditation? What is biofield tuning? Okay. So in biofield tuning, we work with the, so we all have, you know, we have, we can, we have elect, an electromagnetic field around our body. Um, our bodies are electric. Uh, they're, they're, um, like think about measuring the heart field with an EKG, um, or measuring the brain with an EEG. We're just, that's, we just have these rudimentary tools <laughs> to, to measure what's going on electrically, but there's a lot more going on. And so whenever you have an electric current, there's always a magnetic field around it. So we have an electric current running through our body and this magnetic field around us in this modality, the idea it's, we, we think that there are all of our, our memories and all of this energy is stored in this field around us. And in biofield tuning, it's seen as um, like far about six feet away from your body is, is the energy associated with your birth. And then beyond that is ancestral, ancestral energy. Um, so like when I'm working with a tuning fork, I can come in and hear a different sound at the edge of the field um, that can, it, it, and feel it. I feel more. Everybody has different, some people hear energy. And for me, it's more of a, a vibrational feel and I can feel um, different feelings. Um, so like, um, like one of my most profound experiences was right away when I was working on a friend who I was at about, I was going through her field and I was, I was about a third of the way through and she's about 30. And, um, and so I was at a, about 10 or so. And I was just, I just started sweating and crying and I was just standing there sounding my tuning fork. And I was like, what is going on? It was one of the first times I'd done it myself. And, um, and, and, and I was talking to her and looking at her and she's acting like nothing's going on. And <laughs> we were moving through and I was still learning how to do it. And then afterwards I asked her and, um, 
And she said that that was when her mom had passed away in her life. And, um, and so we, whenever we experience trauma and trauma just means an experience that is overwhelming to the body that we can't process. Um, uh, whenever we experience trauma, it, it can kind of, it can stay there in the field and it can, it can be kind of like, instead of a smooth vibration, there's this dissonance there and it's, um, it's, it's stuck. Um, and so it's, it's out there. And then our body our physical body responds to that blueprint. That's that electromagnetic blueprint out around us. And, and so if we shift that, then we can actually shift the physical body. Um, they bounce off of each other. Um, and so after it was funny, after that session, she didn't feel like she felt anything. Um, but then she quit her job and started a new career and something she'd been wanting to do for a long time. And I was like, it might have had something to do with it. I don't know. It may have. Um, but it was just, it's that was just a, a great experience for me to have to feel that because I always feel other people's energy um in a sometimes good way and sometimes difficult way. And I imagine there's a lot of us here that experience that. Um, and that's something I like to work with people who are who are highly sensitive and um empathic. Um, and animals are animals are highly sensitive and empathic. And so that, that kind of, that kind of helps. So, yep. Moving obstacles out of the way. Yep. That's exactly, that's what I feel like all of this energy work does is it, it allows flow because naturally our bodies want to be, they want to be healthy. Our bodies want to heal. And if we let them, we just get out of the way, which you can't say to somebody, stop believing that. Um, I've tried, I tried that for a long time and it didn't work. So um, I have to use tools and there's so many out there. There's so many, so many different modalities and, and it's, it's awesome. It's fun to explore. It kind of makes healing fun rather than like, Oh, I've got this thing and I'm not doing well and I need to work with it. It's like, Oh no, I've got this challenge. And then who am I going to meet? That's what I think now, who am I going to meet along the way? That's going to help me with this. What am I going to learn? And and the, the possibilities are endless because my mind can only picture certain things, but then I experience things and I'm like, wow, that's shifted a lot. So um, I think time-wise probably need to um, start the meditation unless anybody else has any questions. It's like everybody's good. Okay. Um, so what, what I'd like to do is just invite you guys to, um, We've been talking a lot, um, so so let's let's just kind of move into our bodies. Um, and I just a heads up for this that I kind of move around when I'm doing this. So if anybody's anybody's watching the screen, I kind of move around the whole time. But um, let's move into our bodies, and we can. Um, you might want to turn off your camera if you want. Um, but let's use the breath to do that. So so let's take a take a good breath into the chest. And then take a good breath into our belly, into the abdomen. And finally, let's take a breath into the pelvis. And just direct your attention and your energy and your breath into these areas. Okay, and I'm just going to do a little kind of scanning through the body and go, I'm going to go from through the right to left halves just so we can kind of integrate. And what I'm going to do with this meditation is um, I'm going to intend to run energy through this whole group, but not in a way that's like, I'm going to change something or like just a support, just a supportive energy. And the power of doing a group meditation is, is amazing. Um, we are here in this collective space together and we may not be in the same room, but we're, we're energetically together. And so there's this, there's this group energy that you can, you can feel that we're all supporting each other and we're all, we're all here for each other. And we're, we're doing these, 
doing all of this together. So that's, it's really powerful. So I'd like you just to focus your attention on the top of your head, up at the left side of the top of your head, up near the crown. And just think about all the muscles of your head relaxing and melting. And come down to around your left ear and all those muscles that are around your ear can just relax. And your ear can just be. You don't have to hold it up. You just let it be. And it can help to move your breath into the areas that we're talking about too this whole time. Our bodies love for us to be present with them. They, um, they don't want us to be stuck in our heads. They want us to be feeling into them, even when it's painful, especially when it's painful. And if an area is painful or tense, the more you can bring that breath into that area, it'll start to soften. And it may not soften a lot, but just a little bit, every step is, is great. And then just come down your left, your left jaw, coming from the angle of the mandible up to the center of your chin. Just inviting that expansion and relaxation into that area. Sometimes you can even feel your teeth start to relax. And then coming up to the right side of the head, at the top of the head, relaxing down the side of the right side of the head. In front of the ear, relaxing right ear. Really let those muscles that connect the back of your head down to your shoulders, let those relax. And relax your eyes and just soften them. Coming down to the nose, you can really feel the bones of your face. Just think about the bones of your face and just letting them relax. And coming down the throat, from the back of your neck to the front, those muscles that connect the back of our back of our head down to the front of our clavicles, just let those relax. Let yourself be supported. Feel the support underneath you if you're laying down. And then just come down from at the base of your neck, down your shoulders. Let's go down the left side to the left shoulder joint. Just see if we can give our body any space there. Then come down the upper upper arm on the left side, allowing that area to expand and relax. And the left elbow, all the way down the left forearm. I like to think about the bones, the ulna and the radius just relaxing. Coming down to your wrist. And our hands do so much work for us. We can just let them be. And when we let them be, we can open our palms and soften and just receive. The universe is always giving to us and we just need to receive. So let your fingers relax, left thumb, index, middle, 
fourth finger, fifth finger, let everybody just relax. And then we'll go back up to the right shoulder, come down the right upper arm. Down to the right elbow. And remembering to breathe into any area that feels tense. In the right lower arm. Into the right wrist. And then just let your right hand open and relax. Release any gripping. And just relax each finger individually. Think about each of those bones all the way from the hand to the tip of the finger. Then we'll come back up to midline and up to the upper chest and just feeling, feeling the ribs, each of the ribs as they wrap around our back to the front. Our ribs provide just this safe cage literally for all of our, our vital organs of our chest. They wrap around our heart. Thinking about the heart and everything it does for us, just constantly beating on its own, taking care of everything. And our lungs. And then come down to the diaphragm. Relaxing the diaphragm. And down into the belly. I like to think about all my organs and just thank them for everything they do. They, they like us to know that they're there. <laughs> so we've got our, on the left side, we have the stomach and the spleen and the liver on the right side. You can just breathe into that right side under your right rib cage where our liver lives. And the gallbladder lives there. And then coming down, we have a lot of, a lot of organs right here on the right side in the middle of the belly, the pancreas, small intestine, and all of our, all of our intestines who help us digest and assimilate nutrients and sort out what we, what we want, sort and sift what we want and what we don't want, what we don't need, and then help us let go of what we don't need. And coming over to the, the left side of our belly, getting down towards the pelvis, we have the colon. And then all the pelvic organ, all the pelvic organs sitting down in that pelvic bowl. And we have to think our kidneys too. Can't forget the kidneys. <laughs> I like to breathe into my kidneys and just thank them for all that they do. And then coming down into, into the pelvis and thinking about our hip bones and the hip joint itself and our root coming down, down the upper leg, all the way down to our knees. Let's go down the left, the left upper leg to the left knee. And think about if you can, the back of your knee and all that tissue at the back of your knee and relaxing into that. And that can actually help relax the pelvic floor. And that allows us to open up to all the support around us. 
You can go in down the right upper leg. And you can breathe into the, the back of your right knee. And just let that area expand and be as loose and free as it can be. And you, you can start feeling energy. If you really tune in, you can start feeling the energy move as your focus, your attention goes there and your intention. As they go to these body parts, you can move that energy in your body. You can do this yourself. And you can go down your lower, lower left leg. The lower legs really connect us to the ground. And that's so important. The right lower leg. And then that left ankle. And our right ankle. And then our feet. Feet are a place that is really important for to think about if you're feeling like you're just up in your head and you're kind of anxious and you've got that energy just kind of buzzing around. Just think about those lower legs and your feet. And on the bottoms of our feet, that's where the kidney meridian, the first, first point on the kidney meridian is. And that's where we electromagnetically connect into the ground. So right where the arch of the foot meets the ball of the foot, you have a point there where um, that's a, a really nice way to receive energy from the earth. And you can do it just intentionally, or you can be outside and put your bare feet on the ground when, when weather permits, and just let that earth energy come up through the bottoms of your feet. And then it can come all the way up your legs. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move into more uh, working with the chakras. And what I'd like to do is just focus on the physical aspect of the chakras. And there's an energy center below us that has different names, but the earth star is one name, and that's below our feet, about a foot below our feet. And that comes up energetically just through the midline to the root chakra. And the, the root chakra vibrates at a, at a frequency that we associate with a red, a deep red color. And it's our connection to the earth and all that sustains us. And physically, it's right at the, like where the tailbone ends, like right at the perineal area. So I like to think about like my left sits bone to the pubic bone, to the right sits bone, to the tailbone, and just think about a golf ball sized energy, energy center. And this energy center points, energy comes in and out downward towards the earth from this chakra in a spiraling motion. And we can receive so much support this way. We all need to be grounded to the earth. So just feel into this area and just be curious about what's there. And if there's discomfort, then just breathe into it. You don't have to do anything. Just being present with this area is enough. And then let's travel up the central channel that is right along our spine up to the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is at the level of the sacrum, sacral bone, um, a few finger widths below the navel towards the back. And the chakra vibrates at a frequency of orange color we see as orange. So just imagine that golf ball sized ball of energy towards the back of your body, 
below the navel. And this chakra comes forward, comes out the front, almost like a cone shape, out the front and the back in a spiraling motion. And this is very much about our physical body. So just feeling into this area and breathing into this area. Then we move up into the solar plexus, so coming up the central channel. Up just above the belly button, towards the back. Solar plexus is yellow, has a yellow color. And it's all about our personality, which is so important for living in this earth in a grounded way. We all come forward with a personality and an ego, and that's not, that's not a bad thing. It helps us get things done and have willpower and support ourselves. And physically, the, that chakra energy comes forward and back as well. So there's a cone shape of energy spiraling out towards the front, towards the back. So just being with the solar plexus, what's there? What do you feel? And then coming up the central channel up to the heart chakra. And the heart chakra is just above the diaphragm, like at the base of the sternum, towards the back of the body with a green energy and this energy field is so powerful and so strong. It's one of the easiest to feel on other people. And we receive this energy of love through the back of our heart chakra and emanate that energy out the front and that same cone shape that spirals out away from the body. And the heart chakra is at the center of the lower three chakras below it and the upper th three chakras above it. So it's, it's like our connection and it's, it can be seen as our connection between the physical body and the more energetic parts of us. And it's, it's so important to just nourish that heart chakra. And then coming up the central channel up to the throat at the base of the neck, again, towards the back. And again, a golf ball size energy, just feeling that at the base of your neck. It's a blue color. And our throat chakra allows us to share, our, share ourselves with the world. And in a lot of cultures, it's believed that we're able to hear our higher power through the back of our throat chakra. So just be there and see what you feel at this area. Breathe into this area. And then coming up to the sixth chakra, the third eye, 
and it is between the eyebrows, kind of if you go up in the top of your mouth and just go directly up, it's around there. And it's an indigo color. We have a lot of beliefs in this area. And we can, we can see in a whole different way from this area. And this chakra also comes, the energy spirals out the front and out the back as well. And then finally coming up to the crown chakra, traveling up to the top of the head, a violet color. The crown chakra, chakra is, the energy goes in a vertical motion. So it spirals up towards the sky. It's our connection with all of the all of the energies from above our connection to our higher power And then above the crown, there's an energy, energy source that's the sun star that helps us connect our chakras and our body up to all the sun and the, the moon and the stars and the sky and father sky. Um, so we can connect that crown chakra up to that sun star. And our energy body is what's called a torus. So the energy flows out the top of the crown, like a whale spout, up and out and around the sides, and then down the bottom and comes up again. And just imagine that current flowing. You can feel it flowing from the top of the crown up and around the sides of your body and down to the root. And then going the other way too. We go from the crown through all the chakras down the central channel, down to our root chakra and down out the bottom and up the sides again and up the top. And just really allowing this flow to continue to move can be a really helpful way to just get things flowing. Just knowing that you have this energy body, even though you can't see it, or not everybody can see it. Some people can see it. I can't, so I feel it though. So we just feel it and move that energy around. And that's something you can do anytime on your own. So let's just come back into the body. And Feel our head and our shoulders, and chest, abdomen, down to the pelvis and the legs, all the way down to our feet. And just really feel into your feet and just be here, present, back with our group. And coming out of the meditation. And Seeing what's around you and feeling what's in the room and just being grateful for this time that we have to experience this together. <laughs>